Section 14, fuel delivery designs. So fuel system pressure diagnosis, you need to know your delivery designs to get it. One of the perspectives you need to have is that there is varying amounts of fuel volume that is lost at the fuel injector. So what I just drew there would be an example of maybe idle speed, right? That's the spray coming out of the fuel injectors. There's a loss of fuel volume there. And at wide open throttle, it might be, in, to compare it, it might be something like this. At wide open throttle. Is there a lot more volume loss at wide open throttle compared to idle coming from the fuel injectors? That pump needs to keep up or the, what we can say is our fuel rail pressure that's up here cannot drop during these varying conditions. With the injectors spraying a small amount, there is a large amount of fuel running back to the tank. Why is there a large amount of fuel running back to the tank? Because this pump is produced and designed to handle the high volume loss of the injectors. So right now, when there isn't much volume loss at these fuel injectors, we're dumping most of it back to the tank. And it's spring pressure, it really, think about it, we have, let's say it's 30 PSI opens this, if we have 30 pounds of pressure, that diaphragm will open, will open that dump to the tank, that's what maintains our pressure at 30. As these injectors, let's go wide open throttle again, just give you a comparison, say, on what you might see on the return line. How much fuel is coming back on the return line at wide open throttle, you might just have a trickle of fuel on that return line. So let me ask you this, does the fuel pump check valve affect anything while the car is running? It's just out of the way, right? So would you ever be worried about a fuel pump check valve causing a drivability problem? And the answer is no. A long, long crank? A long crank, yes. But that's not really a drivability problem, yeah. it, you know, to be technical on the name. Okay? We'll get to that. We need to understand this as we, as we continue. What The hard part, I think, about this field is you get a car in and you see a problem. Okay? Uh, let's say a fuel pump check valve is leaking. If it's leaking, what happens when you shut the car off is, let's go back to this picture, what happens if this pump check valve leaks is what I have in green hair as being pressurized doesn't hold pressure. You shut the car off and it bleeds right out into the tank. So let's say that same car with a leaking fuel pump check valve has a single cylinder misfire and it's intermittent and you're having trouble finding that. But what you did find was that fuel pressure doesn't hold. And so you sell the customer a fuel pump to fix that problem, and that customer's really pissed because he just spent a couple hundred dollars on a pump that in his eyes he didn't need because he still has his problem, which is that intermittent misfire. So does that make sense where this, that's the most difficult part about starting in this field is that kind of stuff? You have to sell with an exception. Well, you wouldn't sell it is the issue here. You have to know when to stop. You see a problem with a pump check valve, great. That needs a pump check valve. You need a fuel pump. But is that related to this guy's complaint at all? If he's not complaining about long crank time, then do you care about a fuel pump check valve? And the answer is no. So you have no business selling him a pump even though it's a problem. I'm sure at times he has a long crank and he doesn't care, right? That's not his issue. That's the hardest part here. So what we need to try to do is learn these components individual job and then later you'll be able to plug that in with the symptoms you have. So I didn't know that the three line fuel filter that that's where the regulator was. Here's the situation I ran into. This is a one of the garages I work for. I, I made a missed call. I had a Jeep. It had 20 pounds of fuel pressure. Spec on that Jeep. I can't remember exactly. I'm thinking it was like 50 or 60. 50 to 60 was the PSI, somewhere in that range, and it was a set pressure. It wasn't a variable pressure. Again, no vacuum hose, returnless system. So, of course, I had lean conditions, low power, you know, the whole deal that you have, PO171, lean exhaust bank one. It was an under load lean condition. It was actually lean all the time. 
Again, 20 pounds of fuel pressure, very easy diagnosis. So the next thing I did, thinking again that my, my fuel pressure regulator was in the tank like this picture to the left, it's what I thought I was dealing with. What I did for the Jeep is I checked my pump power, checked my pump ground, they were both good. So I told the garage owner to replace the fuel pump assembly. And again, thinking it was this. On this design, there's no way to know if the regulator is bad or if the pump is bad. Can you guys understand that? If your pressure is low, on this picture to the left, there is no extra step that you need to do for a low pressure prop. So the, the garage owner changed the pump, but he didn't change the fuel filter because the owner just changed the fuel filter. So he left the fuel filter in there. So of course he calls me back. Same problem, same symptoms. I gotta go back to this garage, brand new fuel pump. I go and check it and I have 20 pounds of pressure, brand new pump. What I didn't realize is where the regulator was. On this design, if you have low pressure, say we have 20 on this one, couldn't we have a stuck open fuel pressure regulator that's causing that yeah. low pressure problem? And couldn't we have a faulty fuel pump that's causing that low pressure problem? So how do we address that? How do we know if it's the regulator?